All right, so this is an Apollo, and that is a Zeus flywheel cage. And I've been thinking about this for a long time, but that would be pretty dang cool if it just fit right there. I'm looking to make a proper Nerf Uzi that is fed from a magazine from below and is full auto. Um, here we go. First things first, we're going to just rip everything out. Just that's the plunger and catch assembly. Um, this breech assembly needs to come off. And it looks like that's going to be harder said than done with my one hand. Yep, it is. So I'm going to have to unscrew it with the screw that's hidden right here. And take this entire breech off. Because all I want is the magazine well going up. And then the balls will load into the chamber. I'm going to cut that bottom portion of the chamber off and print probably a small ramp that feeds balls in there. I might lose a ball or two capacity, but that's a small price to pay for a fully auto, potentially sidearm, rival blaster. So looking at this, this is the inside of the breech magazine handle assembly for the Apollo. I'm just going to be cutting with a scroll saw right across there so the magazine just sticks up and is on its own. All right, so I've removed all the internals and I'm just Showing where I'm going to make a cut. Here's a normal 12 round rival magazine. That, of course, slides up here. And this, up you know, there, is what locks and unlocks the balls from flowing. So I'm going to cut just above that nub right there. Just above it. Right where that tube starts. And then we'll come right back. I apologize for the terrible lighting and the subsequent terrible, uh, videoing here, but this is me trying to cut these. Next up, I'm going to be using my trusty Dremel here. Um, this is the bottom of the cage. Here's the top. I'm going to be cutting out almost the entire bottom half of it here. You can see I've already removed this lever action arm here and the bottom half of the, uh, I'm going to call it the drop mechanism. That drops down and activates the, the door inside there. Alright, taking that off so I can cut right there underneath of it. So, basically, if you're following along at home, uh, let me find something to point with. I'm going to be doing multiple cuts, like so, from here down, across, up, and over. And this whole back area here won't be used really, but the balls will go in here, kind of at this angle. And that will hopefully, I'm, I'm probably going to lose two balls by volume just you know, traversing the empty space, but I will hopefully have a fully automatic pistol sized or small submachine gun shaped blaster. And unfortunately, I don't have anywhere to put my camera, so yeah, I'm going to have to do something. Alright, unfortunately that something was making a tripod stand slightly off to the side with three paint cans, so you probably won't be able to catch all of this, but I'm just going to be putting a diamond tip cutter on, a Dremel, and having at it.
see there, I cut the bottom half off, and I'm going to widen up this area because it's got to be at least as wide as half the ball space to be able to let a ball slide up in there. And in fact, I think I'm just going to cut this entire thing off. It's really restricting my cutting abilities. Lots of plastic everywhere. So that's what I'm at right now. I'm going to cut further into each of these sides, but not too much on this one because that's where the moving parts are. It's going to be tough. All right, there's a lot of cleaning up to do now, but hopefully you can see I've hollowed it out. So a ball, I don't know where to put this, but a ball can simply drop in or be slid up from the top here into this area, and then the pressure on it will hopefully let them slip through when this is pulled, and you'll be flinging. All right, so. Here's what I have now, the cleaned up magazine bit and the cleaned up flywheel bit. Um, I'm going to have to mount it sort of like that, which means I'll have to cut away quite a bit of the handle and the trigger will be downsized. Um, that's going to be tough, but I'm going to go ahead and make cuts here and here and take out this little center of black area so that the wheel can fit down in there. Now, it reminds me a little bit of a stockade with just the shape of the grip, the angle, and a lot of the muzzle design, I think. Um, that's what I'm looking at right now. I haven't glued anything, so it's still loose. I need something that will fit over here and basically take the balls that are being pushed up here and reroute them into the cage. So I'm thinking this pill container. I'm going to cut it in half and then make cuts downwards and somehow fold it over into a kind of a 80 degree bend or an elbow joint and hopefully the balls will be able to roll against that. Alright so I've been thinking about it and trying and trying to make a ramp and the ball up force just didn't equal forward force unfortunately so I've removed the little door mechanism. Um, this is now going to be fully electronic. I'm going to Try my luck with a rapid strike pushing mechanism with a Rhino uh, 130 MTB Rhino motor, and I've hollowed that slot out there so that this pusher will fit in like so. And it's awfully hard to show on camera, but that pusher arm goes forward about the length of one and a half balls. And since two of them will fit up into this chamber, I'll be able to shoot 11 out of a 12 round magazine, and there's just going to be one floating around there. So. I just loaded one ball in. I've got a two cell lipo to run the flywheel, so I'm going to turn those on now. And uh, afterwards, I will hold down and turn on the pusher mechanism and see if it works. Sorry for the funny noises and probably bad camera quality in that last one. Uh, back to my normal camera. I'm using JB Weld Plastic Weld. 
to uh, epoxy putty reinforce all of this because right now it's being held together by super glue, which you should not do. Um, it's fine for packing together, but you definitely want something a little firmer holding your final product. And I realize that this is just a primary and that the work I'm putting into it, or it's just a secondary, and the work I'm putting into it is really kind of ridiculous, but I'm just so excited to have what I think to be, what I think is the first actual, you know, Uzi that's magazine fed from the handle. So I'm going to get to epoxy putting these parts together to make sure they're not going anywhere. And uh, we'll fast forward through this right now. Totally covered in epoxy putty all over my hands now. Um, use gloves, really you should. Uh, but just wanted to show you where I put the putty, where the motor cage and the frame hit, uh, where the switch is mounted, motor cage and frame contact, motor cage came, the motor cage frame contact, uh, pusher motor, pusher motor and frame, again push motor and frame there, cage and frame, and cage and frame. Hopefully, if you're following along, at, um, if you're following along at home, that'll help. I can't talk right now because I've been working on this for hours. All right, guys, this is where the 3D part of custom 3D Nerf comes in. I'm going to crack knuckles. Start designing. Now I'm using Overwolf, which is a game overlay system, to record this. Should be doing just fine. Um, and I use Google SketchUp to design. Now, here we go. First of all, what I'm going to have to do, and I'm going to switch to my iPod, iPad just so you can see this in real life. Starting now. First of all, what I need to do is uh, design something to cover up the wheels on this side because those will cut you. Um, they will cut you very badly. And after that, I'm th pretty sure, see, that switch is going to have to be bent just a bit more in. Be a cage around here, hops up over that, goes across, down, cage over the top, um, hops up again, and down and that will be a piece that I'm going to use and then make the side cover and I'm going to attempt to cover everything all the way back um, above here swoop down below come out and then up and then over just along the top of the battery tray until I hit this part of the cage then jump up again make that a square and then I'll have some place to velcro my battery into and probably print a cover that will go over top of it um, on this side, it's going to be pretty close to the same thing, except that I want the you know, rectangular parts to come across over here. I kind of shot myself in the foot with the shortness of that wire. Um, across, down, follow the contour of the cage until it gets to here, then across again, follow the contour up, and just box that in. Follow the cage down, over, and it's going to need a hole for these plug to sit out so I can plug my battery in. Now back to the computer now, and let's see what we can do. Um,
Alright, as my parts are printing here, on my two printer bots, we're just going to take a walk through my absolutely filthy basement. And, uh, ooh, big shout out to Alice, aka Coat Duck, um, for convincing me to turn this into a flywheel braking variety of switch and electrical setup. So basically now, you know, the flywheels and the pusher are connected, they're, they're, they're the same. So when power is sent to the flywheels, power is also sent to the pusher and it shoots. And unfortunately, as the flywheels slow down, it's still sending power to the uh, pusher mechanism in the form of the flywheels acting as generators, just you know, freewheeling and slowly losing energy. Uh, this fixes that. That blue wire that goes up there essentially shorts out the wheels when the switch is not pressed and stops them. And because the wheels stop, the, motor, the push motor also stops. So check this out. So it stops, boom, like that, pusher quits moving, and uh, the flywheels also stop, which causes wear on them, but this way you can shoot two, three, four at a time and stop and have multiple shots, so thank you for that, Alice. Alright, now for the new actual firing demo um, with the braking on, which allows me to do bursts, so here goes a few. Yeah. All right, so it's looking pretty good so far. Um, this is the printed side with the door on it, so I can clear jams. This is the other printed side that covers all the electronics and motor bulge. Um, they sandwich together. I mean, it, it's it's nice when I've got two hands. But I'm definitely going to need some play work to fill in the insides there. Um, I've also thought against printing this bit and actually just using what came with the Apollo. Mostly because it, it already fits back there, and I know it will. I'll cut it right here and uh, put some kind of plate on the back, maybe a stock attachment nub. And yeah, this little dip here will house a Velcro on battery, and we should be good to go. All right, good morning, world. Uh, I think I'm done with the bodywork. I basically just took the rear part of the Apollo that fit around the handle and uh, slapped on the very tail end of the Apollo, and then cut the top off. So now I've got a place to stick my battery and Velcroed on top of the pusher mechanism and Velcro on the bottom of the battery here. So now I can mount the battery kind of in there and it stays pretty flush with the entire setup. And that's important because I really want to holster this. All right, so there you go. That's the overall look of it. Now. For the most part, I think I'll be using the 7 round magazine just because it'll be less bulky. And because this is going to be a pistol, it's going to be in a holster, I do not need that sticking out super far. just need to push this up and in. There it goes. So, I don't know what to call it yet, but here it is. The first legitimate Nerf Uzi. Now of course the spread was terrible because, let's face it, it's a pistol. But those shots were hitting about 80 feet, which is consistent with what a Zeus would hit at that power level and modification level, because it is essentially a Zeus in a palm-sized shape. Here's a 12 round magazine. Yeah, shots are very sporadic in their spread, but you know, it works. And that's the point. This is not supposed to be something that will be you know, used anywhere, you know, further away than 30 feet or so. And those hit shots were hitting more than double that. Um, I'm very happy with it overall. Let's hope that I can get a holster for it, and yeah, that'll be the next clip.